This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Another inmate has died at the Wapun State Prison. The initial investigation points to suicide. It's the fifth time an inmate has died at Wapun since June of last year. Nine people, including the former warden, were arrested earlier this year on felony charges connected to some of those deaths. Swing state polls show Kamala Harris has erased Donald Trump's lead. Marquette poll director Charles Franklin says it appears President Biden dropping out of the race is a game changer, at least for now. Democrats who were very unenthusiastic when Biden was the candidate have now become almost as enthusiastic as Republicans erasing an advantage that Republicans have had all year. Franklin speaking with Wisconsin Eye. The two major presidential campaigns will hold competing events in Eau Claire tomorrow. Vice President Kamala Harris has had plans to hold a rally in Eau Claire since last week. Late yesterday, Republican running mate J.D. Vance announced plans to speak to the press in Eau Claire. A new University of Wisconsin study finds income inequality in Wisconsin is not as wide as other states, but it's growing. Robert Craig of Wisconsin Citizen Action says that's due to years of policy decisions and tax code changes. We need need to deliver a policy that restores the conditions for greater economic equality and greater racial equality because our socioeconomic system is color-coded and where you are more likely to be poor if you were black or brown than if you were white. Craig says clean energy jobs backed by federal investments can help reverse the trend. Communities around Wisconsin are getting money to reach out to people who need lead pipes removed. $900 million in loan money comes from the bipartisan infrastructure law. Communities can start applying at the end of the month. More than 37,000 lead service lines have been replaced or shut off in Wisconsin since 2018. Wisconsin wildlife officials are out with their fall hunting forecast for 2024. The archery and bow deer season for deer is being extended in some areas. The Department of Natural Resources expects good harvest numbers for turkeys, pheasants, grouse, and bear. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. This is news from WMDX Madison. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. Storms swept through southern Wisconsin last night, and some of you woke up to see your power went out overnight. At one point, thousands of people didn't have electricity. Right now, though, between Madison Gas and Electric and Alliant Energy, there are only about 1,500 homes without power. Those outages are highly concentrated on the east side, in Monona, Verona, and the Poinette area. These numbers have been rapidly changing throughout the morning. Crews are out fixing down power lines as fast as they can. The city of Madison is writing more parking tickets. They stopped enforcing parking limits in 2020 when so many people were working from home and there were many fewer cars on the streets. The Isthmus reports in 2020, the parking enforcement team wrote less than half as many as the year before. They also had fewer staff members, but gradually they've gotten them back. All money from parking tickets goes into the city's general fund. Last year, that amounted to about $4 million. And tonight is National Night Out. The goal is to strengthen community relationships with law enforcement. The biggest event is at Warner Park before the Nightmares game. Madison police will have drones, dogs, and even mounted officers there so kids can pet some horses, plus family activities and dunk tanks and a bounce house. But they're also setting up shop at about a dozen neighborhood spots throughout the day and tonight. There are events like this all over southern Wisconsin and all over the country. We're about to start a new school year, and there's a new superintendent for the Madison Metropolitan School District. Joe Gothard told WMTV his top concern is staffing. After that, safety and security and student achievement top his list of priorities. The first day of school for all students is Wednesday, September 4th. Meanwhile, families are back to school shopping, and it feels like we look for bargains whenever we can these days. But scammers know how to prey on parents trying to save a buck, especially online. Michelle Ryan from the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection. Scammers send those fake ads claiming to be that trusted business, and the ads offer these amazing deals and low prices, but they lead shoppers to a near-identical copy of that seller's website. But really, it's the scammer. Ryan says buying local in person can be your best bet. And you may notice fewer butterflies and bees this summer. We've had so much rain, and that rain does help grow pollinator-friendly plants, but it also grows mold and fungi that can be deadly to caterpillars. Plus, lush greenery can make a perfect home for butterfly predators like stink bugs or paper wasps. Climate change makes a difference in this whole equation, too. If you'd like to help pollinators like bees and butterflies have plants they like that bloom not just in the summer, but early and late in the season, too. 
Anywhere in partial sun and blocked from the wind can be perfect for them. And one of Madison's most beloved places for families is now open an extra day. The Madison Children's Museum is now open six days a week instead of five. It's normally closed Mondays and Tuesdays, but for the month of August, it's open Tuesdays. They'll even have special programming on Tuesdays, too, like open art studio, let's move, and even a visit from the UW Genetics Department. Staff say opening for Tuesdays in August will give families extra options before kids head back to school. And Ride the Drive is this weekend, and they need more volunteers. The event celebrates alternative modes of transportation, with streets open to people on bikes or just their own two feet. About 400 volunteers are needed for the event on Sunday. 300 will be dedicated just to guiding traffic. And if you aren't participating, at least now you know there will be street closures downtown on Sunday. And that's what you need to know. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. This is WMDX News. The Packers get craft back. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. After suffering a torn pectoral muscle this spring, Packers tight end Tucker Kraft has been cleared to practice. I think the the reason why I'm playing in the NFL is because my my yak capabilities. You know, we get in a hot situation, I'm in the flat, catch the ball, it's a 20-yard game. Baseball, L.A. Dodgers first baseman Freddie Freeman returned to action after being at his three-year-old son Max's bedside last week, paralyzed with Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's been a long week. No one should have to go through this, especially a three-year-old. I don't know how many times Chelsea and I said we wish we could switch, you know. The boy's now back home in recovery. Freeman thanking the Dodgers organization and Brewers manager Pat Murphy. Anybody associated with the Dodgers has been incredible. And then I want to give a shout out to uh, Pat Murphy and his staff. They actually sent a whole video to us and my family about how they were praying for us and wishing us well. The Brewers play the Braves tonight in Atlanta. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. The Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez divorce has been injected with some actual Hollywood-style drama. According to Suge Knight, illicit videos of Lopez were found when the FBI raided Sean Diddy Combs' properties a few months ago. The former Death Row CEO claims the FBI gave the videos to Affleck as a solid to prepare him in case the videos potentially went public. Knight is apparently basing this all on the timing of the issues between Affleck and Lopez. Combs has been accused of crimes ranging from sex trafficking to sexual assault. What are the effects of divorce? For a middle-aged man, for Ben Affleck, he sought counsel from his ex-wife Jennifer Garner, who eventually had to excuse herself from being her ex's therapist. Affleck is also rocking a faux hawk like Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver. This all comes as TMZ reports that Affleck and Lopez are not speaking to each other. In the meantime, Ben Affleck will presumably be on the lookout for a new girl named Jen while looking like Travis Bickle. Molly Kearney has left the show Saturday Night Live after two seasons. Kearney is the show's first non-binary cast member ever. On social media, Kearney called their SNL experience a dream come true and looked back fondly. Her exit follows the exit of fellow cast member Punky Johnson, who announced she was leaving the show after four seasons. Johnson also put out a social media message that said, SNL, I love you. What could possibly make shooting a steamy sex scene for a movie even more awkward? When asked what his most embarrassing scene ever to film was by Elle magazine, Josh Hartnett said it was a scene from the 2001 film Pearl Harbor, where he and co-star Kate Beckinsale made love in a parachute. If you haven't already guessed, it was a Michael Bay film. The star of the new film Trap says Beckinsale's one-year-old child and her boyfriend were present during filming. That's enough to give a guy a case of the yips, among other things. It was another record-breaking weekend at the box office. Not only did Deadpool and Wolverine keep the top spot for the second weekend in a row, it topped $100 million in sales for the second week and is on pace to top $400 million at the domestic box office and well over $800 million worldwide. If the current pace keeps up, it could overtake Inside Out 2 for the highest-earning film of 2024 so far. Box office prognosticators said that it is likely Deadpool and Wolverine will become the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time without the adjustment for inflation. Deadpool and Wolverine is already the highest grossing R-rated film domestically, overtaking The Passion of the Christ. Rounding out last week's top five were Twister at $22 million, the new M. Night thriller Trap starring Josh Hartnett, which pulled in $15 million, Despicable Me at $4 million, and Inside Out 2 at just under $7 million. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Clouds and a lingering shower or two this morning, becoming partly cloudy by later this afternoon. Our high today, 70, with wind out of the northeast at 5 to 15. Tonight, mostly clear, 56. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a high of 78. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it is 60. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio.